Enough is enough. I've had it with these motherfucking snakes in this motherfucking building. 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 Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Crimes, Killers, Cults, and Beer. And Beer. And Beer. And Beer. Two crazy Florida men drinking beer, talking about true crime, and um, because you guys don't want to hear us talk about um, Star Wars. (laughs) (laughs) But we're going to make you listen to it anyway, eventually. Yeah, eventually on a different on a different podcast. Yeah, not on this one. If we ever dude. get if we ever get that one up and running. Yeah, dude, Ahsoka comes out Tuesday. Yeah, hell yeah. The first but, two episodes. Yeah, I know what I'll be doing Tuesday night. Yep, me but, too. Uh, speaking of TV shows, man, um, were you ever into wrestling like pro WWE WWF? Not so much. I mean, I'd watch it, but I wasn't like a a fanatic about it, you know. I was um, a fanatic about it when I was, a, you know, a kid and a teenager and into my um, early to mid twenties. Mm-hmm. And I kind of got, I kind of got out of it. But, um, you know, I, I have, I've been out of it for years. But the reason I bring this up is, because, you know, you were talking about Ahsoka coming out, and I'm pumped for that. But I've recently found a show on Stars called Heels, okay. and it's about, um, like a like a local wrestling league. And it's really, really good. I mean, people, people that don't even like wrestling would probably enjoy that, um, that, that show. And it's just, and and they're, they're dropping the episodes weekly. I'm like, and the, the, the most recent one that came out, Mm. I mean, I'm not going to give you any spoilers or whatever, because if you want to watch it, because it's, it it is really good. It's it's one of the best shows, you know, one of the best new cons, new, new idea type shows that I've ever, I've ever seen. I mean, it's that good. It's got the guy that played the arrow. Oh yeah. Stephen A. Mel. That's right. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And he's also, um, and then the second, the second character is the guy that played, um, um, Bjorn Ironsides in Vikings. Oh yeah. I, I really like him. I mean, he, he is really emerging as a great actor. He's, um, you know, it's like, I really like, I mean, he was, he was in Hunger Games, but, you know, <laughs> badass, the term. Every, he, everybody makes mistakes, man. <laughs> yeah. But, but, well, that put him on the map, though. I mean, oh, he was yeah. like, in the Witch Mountain movies, too, when he was younger and all that stuff. But his role, when he played, uh, Bjorn Ironside in Vikings, it was just like, holy shit, this guy's good. And then he, then he comes back and, you know, in heels and everything and, it's like, damn, this guy, I mean, he's going to be, he, he's going to be a serious A-lister before he knows it. I mean, that, that guy's right awesome. Hashtag. Hey. But I digress. We digress right out the gate. <laughs> yep. Well, I, 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 I was going to talk about that show anyway, but just because it's, it, it's that, it's that good. Yeah. I recommend it. I, I hope Ahsoka is going to be good. The previews look good, but mm-hmm. we know how that happens. Yeah, but anyway, that's Todd. And that's Bill. And I'm playing with my mic, sorry. I'm drinking Bud Light and not playing with my mic. I'm drinking rum and coke out of my blue powder blue sippy cup. And, and I'm a poet, wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? And I'm going to stop playing with my mic, I promise. <laughs> I would hope so after that after that burn that I did on you before we started. I know, I was just going to bring that up. What would you say again? <laughs> um. I, I said some, something phallic gets stuck in your face and you want to play with it. Yes. <laughs> That's a good, that one was so good. I can't even be mad about it. 
because it's true. <laughs> Uh, well, you know anyway. what? I, yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm drinking Bud Light. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? No, I didn't. Okay, <laughs> I'm just making sure. Did you see the um the latest Bud Light scandal? Kid oh. Rock was spotted at an event drinking Bud Light after he came out against it. <laughs> well, you know. <sighs> What can you do? I mean, when it's, when you're famous like that and you say some bullshit like that, man, you you either, you got you reap what you sow, you know. But really, I mean, you know, most most people. I mean, I I don't even necessarily buy the fact that um that Bud Light sales are tanking. I don't I don't even buy it. I I think it's just I think it's conservative um conservative media and everything just pushing the narrative just like oh yeah bud light and blah, 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 blah. just because i don't i honestly don't see bud light mentioned any any uh, like any other publication oh, other yeah. than like these these websites of like ben shapiro and stuff like that um you know facebook pages and whatnot they're the only that, that yeah. they're the only people talking about it in, anymore and they're just trying to keep it go you know keep it afloat well you know but, it's it's like hey look over here while i do something over here Right. So, you know, they, they, they have to like keep, and I know we're not supposed to be political on here, but you know, shit, it's what happens. If they, they got to stir up some kind of shit to hide what they're really doing. Yep. <clears throat> so I mean, anyway, I, I just, anyway, enough of that. Let's get into this. Uh, this is the second episode of the half pint series, the half yes. pint episode series. The first one was really good. Enjoyed, enjoyed the hell out of doing it. Yeah, Hopefully it this one lives up. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're probably going to, I have a feeling we're going to get a really big boost off of those because people are going to be like, you know, cause it, it, as, as much as people like the deep dive long episodes, there's just as many people that don't like that and would rather hear a short one. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I, like seriously, like, when you listen to, I mean, I guess if you're at home doing something, you got a podcast on, that's one thing. But like, if you're listening to it in your car, like there's not many people that, are going to drive for two hours to hear, you know, and they're going to like, Oh dude, I'm only going to be in the car for 10 minutes. I ain't going to listen. Yeah. True. But you know, you, I mean, I mean, I like, I like the fact that we go deep into the details. Yeah. Even though it makes for really long nights. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, yeah. If, if you know any, if you know any truck drivers, tell them about our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Cause I am a truck driver. Yes. Oh. I mean, I drive a truck too, but not the kind of truck he's talking about. Yeah. So anyway, let's jump into the episode. Yeah. Enough digressing because shit, dude. We've, yeah. we've burnt like over 10 minutes of just talking about nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so November 1987, 38 year old Frank Rennick and his wife Kim were building their dream home on a 70, 72 acre plot of land in Florence, Missouri. They had two boys named Sam and Ben. Now, Not Sam Frank, and Dean? Come on. <laughs> no, it wasn't Sam and Dean. <laughs> um, I killed Hitler. <laughs> but um, Frank owned a company called Rennick Pet Foods, and he and um, Kim were a good and fun couple, and and they were they were living in a rental while their new place was being built. And in 1989, the house was complete. They moved in, and everything was great. Until um, they found out it was built on an Indian graveyard. <laughs> well, that might explain some things, but we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to be dropping spoilers. No, no, no it, I'm serious. I, 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 I said that kind of tongue in cheek, but you yeah. know, a lot of shit happened to this family on that property. So it, it might be a possibility. <laughs> but anyway. So. Sam, um, you know, Sam and Ben, they loved, um, going out into the woods that were on the property and everything. And Ben took a immediate liking to snakes. How, and how is he, that even possible? I don't know. I like snakes. I mean, I, but yeah, Ben mm-hmm. loved snakes. He would catch them and stuff like that. And, okay. You know, and just, handle them and, and whatnot. But 
in September of 1992, there was an explosion at the house, um, and it just completely demolished the house. There was nothing left. And wow. no, nobody was hurt because nobody was home. But it was determined that um, a propane tank leak um, leaked into the house and ignited and went boom. Yeah. Okay. So no, it no no insurance fraud. It was just an accident. <laughs> but stoichiometry begs to differ with you, but that's all right. <laughs> no, it was just a, it was a, it was a freak accident, but. They, they moved, and this, and this, this proves it too. They moved a trailer onto the property and they started over, you know, um, building a, a new house. Um, this, this house was only three years old, so yeah. why do that? You know, I mean, that it wasn't, it wasn't insurance fraud. Maybe they were trying to hide their mess lab. <laughs> nah, these are good up, up. There's only one, there's only one villain in this story. <laughs> uh, okay. So um <clears throat> they they moved a the trailer from onto the property and they started building a new house. But then Kim was diagnosed with breast cancer. And around that time Ben was 8 years old and he was so into snakes and everything that he even started breeding them, like researching them and breeding them and stuff like that. So, um, Frank, you know, the, the, the new house was finished, event, you know, eventually, and Frank even built Ben like a, like a building to, to keep snakes in. Oh, okay. You know, right and he, he was a legitimate herpetologist. You know, he, he didn't just like the snakes, he loved them and he knew an awful lot about them. You know, yeah. He, well, right <laughs> so, on. It's good to support your kids' hobbies. This wasn't a hobby, as we'll find out. Well, I mean, but, dude, he's eight years old. He's not a herpetologist yet. <laughs> well, he probably knows at this point. He probably knows more than some herpetologists do. Yeah, that could be. <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm saying, though, dude. I mean, don't, I mean, is, yeah. is that is that a thing that you can just call yourself, or do you actually have to like go to school for that? You know, I honestly don't know. I mean, I used to breed pythons and stuff back in the '90s, and I, 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 I know a good a good amount about snakes, and I would, I wouldn't have called myself a herpetologist. Yeah, so he's only, you know, he's eight. He's not a herpetologist yet. It's a hobby. And his dad built him a big old shed to keep his snakes in. That's awesome. Yep. <laughs> yep. But, um, on New Year's Day of 2009, tragedy hit again and their mother, Kim, died. Mm. Uh, ben stayed on the property and he started, started, um, let's see, he was born in, what did I say, 87. Um, so he started rennic reptiles in his early twenties and, and he, he would breed and he would breed the designer snakes, um, oh. and, and sell them to people all over the world. And he was thriving and doing very well with it. And he, he actually, you know, and he cared, he cared more about the snakes than he did about the money that he was making. And he was making good money. Um, you know, but well, when you love your job, it doesn't matter. Right. So, um, but the, what I mean by the, um, designer snakes are like the, the mutations in color and patterns, patterns, uh, pat, yeah. pat, pattern schemes. <laughs> you should have just said patterns. It was the schemes that fucked you up. Mm -hmm. Like, like albino pythons and all, yeah. the, all that stuff. And, but, um, uh, he would tra travel to reptile shows, you know, conventions all over the place to sell them. And, um, and 2010, Ben would meet the love of his life, 22 year old Lynn, uh, Lynn Lee Gallatin at a party. And, you know, they, they hooked up, became an item, and he introduced her to his family about two weeks later. But she was really into snakes as well. So, like, yeah, you put a ring on that one. <laughs> yeah, right. Especially if, if snakes is your livelihood in your life and everything, you find somebody that likes them as much as you do. Yeah, you at, at, a, at a party. I'm sure this wasn't a snake party. No, it wasn't a snake party. So you, 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 you meet you meet a girl that's in the snakes just like you are at a party, dude. That's like that's one in a million. Yeah, one in a million. You definitely marry that one. Yeah, but be careful what you wish for. 
put a knife. Well, in yeah, there. yeah. There's there's always that caveat. But um, but Lindley had a three year old son, which Ben took to really well. And a year later, the couple had a daughter of their own. But Frank, their his dad was in trouble, uh, both financially and criminally. No. Oh. Um, he had been charged with mail fraud, and it turns out lots of company money had been used on Kim's medical bills and everything. And you know, he he was going to be arrested and and more than likely sent to prison. Oh, well, damn it, man! So twenty four hours before he was to be arrested, Frank committed suicide, <laughs> blew his brains out. Wow. So he knew that he was, you know, he he knew he was going down. Yeah. But it was his company, though. Do whatever he wants. Unless, well, unless you there's, think. <laughs> unless there's, a, I don't know how any of that stuff works, but unless there's like investors or something like that. Yeah. I, I don't know. But, um, yeah, you would think that it's just like, hey, it's my company. I can, I can, I can. I made this money. You didn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> Unfortunately, that doesn't work that way. Yeah. But, but anyway. So Ben got the property and Sam got $1.2 million under the stipulation that uh, he would help Ben to maintain the property. So Sam moved his family into the into the house and everything seemed fine. But they were butting heads on the money. Um that it was taken to, you know, to manage the upkeep of the property. Yeah. 72 acres. That's a lot. That is a lot. Holy shit. <laughs> 72 acres. That's a, that's a small town. Yeah. So Ben's business was skyrocketing and Lynn Lee was a very helpful partner and they were married in 2014 and Lynn, Lynn Lee, she decided she wanted to open a beauty spa. <laughs> So um, Ben helped her open it, and it took off initially, but then the newness wore off rather quickly, mm. and it started making less and less money. But Ben was bankrolling it, and he wasn't happy about the situation, which caused friction between him and Lynn Lee. Yeah, yeah, as it often does. Yep. So Sam decided to, or excuse me, Ben decided to to sell the the property because um because he was you know Sam was struggling with the the money and everything yeah. and, but um but Sam didn't like the idea I mean it's like no I wonder how many bodies are buried out there <laughs> no and it's not it's not that type of a story well you know what I mean so that's, the, that's the only reason you don't want to give up that something like that is because there's evidence out there. <laughs> he's, he's not Pee Wee Gaskins. He's not taking people out to the back of the property. Just saying. Wonder if that's going to be a thing in every one of these half pint episodes because I said he's not Pee Wee Gaskins, and I said that did, the first yeah. one. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't even think about that, but yeah, it could be. <laughs> So, um, in 2017, Ben had a client who wanted a million dollars worth of snakes. And that's a lot of snakes. Uh, what, what's, what's like one snake go for? I don't well, even know. Like, a, um, like if you get one of these, like, you know, exotic colors, you know, like color yeah. morph snakes and everything, you know, at, for, for a baby, you're probably going, you're, you're, you're probably going to pay, um, probably $500, maybe more for, for like a baby ball python or something like that. Oh, yeah. if, it's, if it's a Burmese python or a reticulated python, you're going to pay a little bit more because they're bigger snakes. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, snakes, snakes ain't cheap, <laughs> but and he was, I had no and idea. He was, I mean, it, it, I could be way off too. I it could, I could be way off. It could be a hell of a lot more than that. All right. While you're talking, yeah. I'm going to Google because okay. I can. So I'm listening, and, I'll, well, and I I've will seen, respond. I've seen some of these, um, some of these, you know, and, and some of these snake, these patterns that they come up with are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen some pythons that have a iridescent skin on mm-hmm. it, where like 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 my purple Gibson Les Paul, where if it's in one light it's purple, another light it's blue. Right. You know, I've seen I've seen uh, Burmese pythons that are like that, and you know it was, it was like, but it's more than just two colors. You'd have like a purple, you'd have like a um like a yellow, you'd have a blue, you would, and it just depends on, depends on the lighting and the angle that you're looking at it. But I would imagine those snakes are probably worth you know a hell of a lot more. So oh, I just found one. That that just boggled my mind, but I got to read about it. So carry on, and I'll I'll pipe in in a minute. Okay. Um. So that million dollars worth of snakes would be a way to save the house. Um. But later in 2017, uh, a, like as the transaction was being completed, nine one one received a phone call from Lynn Lee. But anyway, Lynn Lee was hysterical and she said that her husband was on the ground and there was blood on the floor. And, um, Sam showed up and he got on the phone. Uh, apparently a, there was a snake missing, an anaconda. Ben was dead and police raced, you know, they, they hauled ass to the snake facility. And Lynn Lee told the police that an anaconda was missing and that the building was, the whole building was full of snakes, about 3,000 different snakes. Jesus. A lot of snakes. <laughs> how, how do you feed that many? I mean, I know snakes don't eat a whole lot, but dude, how do you feed that many fucking snakes? Well, there was a, probably right next to that. He probably had a, you know, like a like a chicken coop type thing where with a whole bunch of rats. With a whole bunch of rats in it, in it. yeah. Rats breed fast, so I mean that makes perfect sense that you got a rat cage too or whatever, you know. Yeah. And they, yeah, I mean they they breed like rabbits, and the the larger snakes they would need to eat rabbits. Yeah, dude, I was in a pet store one, uh, since we're on this topic right now, why not? I was in a pet store one time and, it, and this guy standing next to me was like, dude, I bet my snake could eat a cat. <laughs> and I'm like, no, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy every cat, I'm gonna buy every kitten in here just to stop you from feeding one to your goddamn snake. <laughs> and as, as we all know, I am the crazy cat lady of this podcast and I, I can't have that. <laughs> Is your feline fur baby having uncontrollable hairballs? Kitty chat with Todd. Can help. Does your precious princess sharpen her claws on your brand new microfiber sectional sofa? Kitty chat with Todd. Can help. Join Todd, the crazy cat lady. He can help you with all of your pussy cat problems and your kitty cat concerns. Did your kitty develop indigestion after an ate your meth head roommate who died of an overdose while you were on vacation? Kitty Chat with Todd. Can help with that too. Find the Kitty Chat with Todd podcast at Kitty Chat with Todd on MySpace. Kitty Chat with Todd. It has the answers you need. Kitty Chat with Todd. Where every day is catter day. Meow. I, I knew a guy one one time. I think we have told both of these stories on a different episode at some point. Probably, but um, it might have been digressions. I don't know, but um, because that's what this whole we, is right now. <laughs> but we um, yeah, he, he was like saying he would he would check the one ads and everything to put you know like free to kittens to a good home. Yeah, and um, you know, and for his his boa, and I'm I'm just like, dude, you just need to just. Get the fuck away from me. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. I mean, and I, you know, I don't agree with it, but I know it happens because, you know. It's a, it's a circle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Circle of life. You know, snakes got a snake and cats got a cat. So that's all there is, you know. Yep. <laughs> but, um, so. The police thought that they were going into the building where there was an anaconda, like a big anaconda loose, and um, and that it killed Ben. So they're like, yeah, there's there's um, body cam footage of um, officers saying, just like, dude, it's a big anaconda loose in here. 
then you hear another officer say, "I'm going to I'm going to shoot it if I see it." And we actually have audio feed from that body cam from the one police officer who was concerned about it. Let's go ahead and play number three. Enough is enough. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes in this motherfucking building. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Oh, don't act like you didn't know that was coming. And an anaconda, a, a full grown anaconda. Yeah, I'd shoot the fucking thing too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but um, you know the you know those big anacondas, they don't move fast like they do in the movies. Uh-uh. <laughs> Not on land. No, in the water they're like they're super fast, but on land, mm-mm. yeah, they're too heavy. It's not like that movie with J Lo in it. <laughs> yeah, where they're, where they're like, <laughs> yeah, dude, you can't have a, a. They're moving like a fucking black racer. Yeah, you can't you can't have a thirty foot anaconda or whatever it was that weighs almost a ton. Nothing that weighs a, more than any you know, more than like five six hundred pounds can move fast. I mean, you know, tigers and cheetahs and shit do that, but. Yeah, if you come across, they have uh, legs. If you, they they have legs, and then their spine is co- built like a bow and arrow to flex. You know, if you come across a um, uh, like a twenty five foot anaconda in the um, like out in the like in the like you're hiking through the jungle, the rainforest, or whatever. If you happen to come across one on land, even if it strikes at you, if it misses you. You can get away. It, yeah, you're, you're good. going to be able to outrun it. <laughs> yeah. But if you, but but if it ambushes you, like jumps out of the bushes after you, and you don't see it coming, yeah. you fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but and if you're in the water, you fuck. <laughs> but yeah, I just, yeah. I don't think I'd be in any body of water in South America. No. Piranhas, snakes, crocodiles, hippos. Hippos. <laughs> Dude, hippos are just mean. I don't know if they know that they're ugly and that's why they mean or what, but hippos are just mean. Mm-hmm. They don't care. Nope. I think hippos are Africa, though. They were brought to Central America by um, Pablo Escobar. Yes, and he had a whole zoo and they released them, so now hippos are fucking wild in South America. Yep, like iguanas in South Florida. And Burmese pythons for that and matter. And Burmese pythons. And what's the other thing that's here now? Fire ants. There was, there was, there was another, there was another non-indigenous thing to Florida that people were buying as pets and released. Um, what the hell was it? Lionfish. Oh, it, it don't matter. It don't matter. Lionfish. Yeah. But, but people have, um, the, they come in like invasive species. You know what I mean? Yeah. Lionfish. Um, lionfish though, people have figured out how to prepare them and serve them up. And, um, you know, they, I, I would try it. I want uh, to try uh, it. No, dude, if that, if that, if that, that chef makes one mistake preparing that, you're dead. I'd still try it. No, I mean, they sell no. them at, they sell them at Clay, Clayton's Crab Company on US1. Yeah. They sell lionfish there. And that's and that's Not the cool thing enough. about it is they've they found a they found a way that it's just like okay you're invasive but you know what we can eat you so that'll <laughs> that'll send the population but they gotta they gotta lower the price on them because they're expensive oh yeah I'm gonna pay a shit ton of money to die okay <laughs> dude I mean best case scenario out of any of that you become a zombie <laughs> nah I I I want I I will try lionfish one day. All right, taking your life in your own hands, bro. Yeah. Hey, can we get back to the story? Because we've been digressing for over half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a, I mean, for the podcast, there's probably a lot of this that's going to come out, but you'll see all this in the video. I promise. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it's all relevant because we're talking about snakes. It is, but you know, we're getting a little carried away. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But so they so they examined Ben's body and he was lying in a pool of blood and he had what they thought was a snake bite on him like a, from a large snake. It wasn't it it wasn't a snake bite. The anaconda being loose wasn't a thing. No, of course not. But um there were spent shell casings there. Um and Ben had gunshots wounds 
<laughs> it's like, I don't think the snake shot him. It I don't think the snake hands. shot him. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. have freaking hands. There's no way a snake shot him. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! So I don't. I don't understand why they brought. You know why they even brought up the fact that there was a. You know, oh, there's an anaconda loose. So basically, what I what I have to even bringing that up is. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> Damn, that was that was that was excessive. Yes, that was a little long, but anyway. That's what she said. Mm-hmm. So, um, initially, Ben or Sam and Lynn Lee were the initial suspects, and they were interviewed. Lynn Lee was first. She said it was a normal day, but Ben wasn't answering his phone. Lynn Lee picked up the kids, which was usually Ben's job, and she just came home and just found him like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> she implied that there were financial issues between Sam and Ben, and um, and she she also was saying that Ben had anger issues. Um, the so Sam was then interviewed, and he admitted to arguing about money with Ben. And sure, there were money issues, but Sam killing Ben made no sense whatsoever, because without Ben being there, Sam was screwed. Right. So um, they're, they're, it's, it's Ling Ling the what or whatever her name is. I can tell you that right now. Oh yeah, but there there was there was there was no motive that could be attached to Sam. Yeah. Uh, they did a gunshot residue test on Sam. There was no gunshot residue, and he even passed a polygraph test. So Sam was ruled out as a suspect, which left Lin Lee. But there was no probable cause on her either, so they both were released. Now put a knife in that. (laughs) So shortly later, after Ben's funeral... There it is. (laughs) Lindley isolated herself and the kids from everybody. And when, when Ben was murdered, she inherited the property, and then she had eviction papers served to Sam and his family. She was selling the property. And remember when I said put the knife in that about yeah. there's no motive? It seems like a motive to me. Oh, yeah. That's, um, yeah. If that's not motive, I don't know what is. Yeah, I don't, but, but at the same time, I, I don't see Dick Darwin making an appearance, a ruling on this one. Nah. This one's too cut. This one's too clear cut. <laughs> right. So she sold the property for $740,000. Which, not bad. No, it's not bad. Um, but Sam then starts suspecting Lynn Lee. And she was then brought back in for questioning, and it came out that their marriage had been in trouble. And she had been having an affair with a man named Eric Brenner. Um, he was the marketing agent who was promoting the spa for Lynn Lee. Of course. So, <laughs> I guess, I guess... Marketing can now be a synonym for adultery. <laughs> marketing. Yeah, I'm just going to go out and do a little marketing. I'll be back. <laughs> okay, honey. Have fun. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Marketing. How'd the marketing go? Man. It, it was intense. It, it was intense. Intense marketing. <laughs> Did a little hardcore marketing. Yeah. Gonna be walking funny from the marketing for a couple of days. <laughs> yes. The video of my marketing will be on Pornhub. <laughs> oh Jesus, I went too far. Anyway. But um but she was cheating on Ben when he was killed. So that text text messages showed that Ben and Lynn Lee had been fighting all the time and she became a suspect again and she failed a polygraph test. Uh oh. Meanwhile, Sam passed, but she failed and I don't even, I, I think that they do, you know, because polygraphs aren't admissible in court. I think that the reason why they do them is to A, see if you'll agree to do it and B, they can judge your reaction to it. Just yeah. to, like if you fail, or even if you pass, 
you can, um, you know, they, they can like kind of make notes of your, of your psyche and stuff like that. Oh yeah. But, but, uh, the, the next day, Lindley lawyered up and there, but there was lots of things missing as far as like hard evidence. But that would change shortly later. Um, just three years after Ben's murder, an inmate at Boone County, Missouri jail called the police with information. His name was Brandon Blackwell. All right. He had information on Ben's case and he wants to make a deal. So he had been in a relationship with Lynn Lee for two years while she was married to Ben. And that relationship didn't end well. She wound up having to um, file restraining orders against him, and he was arrested for stalking. Mm, classy this guy. Is, this, yeah, but this is going on while she's married to Ben. Yeah. So she's a told- she's a proven marketer then. Yeah, she yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or at least a good marketing customer. Yeah. Um. Either way. Yeah. She told them that that Lynn. Let me start that over again. He told the investigators that Lynn Lee had told him that she had killed Ben. She and one of her employees, a woman named Ashley Shaw, seeked out another ex of Lynn Lee's, Michael Humphrey. Now, they hadn't spoken in years, and the two and the two women just showed up to to talk to Michael out of the blue. And they just, they're just like, will you help me kill Ben? (laughs) Not very smart. (laughs) Don't be Um, suspicious. Yeah. (laughs) Jesus, that's, oh my God, really? Now, I know this guy. Michael, Michael Humphrey was a lot of things, but one thing he wasn't was a murderer. (laughs) Well, good for him. <laughs> but, yeah, they, she gave, um, Lindley gave a sob story to Michael about, um, how badly he was treating her. You just gotta die. <laughs> you gotta die. I can't tell any way out of it because I'm like, oh, he's just a monster. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Yeah, fuck off, Lindley. <laughs> so the next day, Lindley, Ashley, and Michael were arrested for a probable cause in the murder. So they interviewed Michael Humphrey, and he agreed. He said that he agreed to go to the snake farm with him, but he didn't agree to killing anybody. Like I said, he was a lot of things, but he wasn't yeah. a murderer. Right. All right. So they got there, and Lindley introduced Michael to Ben as somebody who might be interested in buying snakes. Um, while uh, Ben's back was turned, she handed Michael a gun, and he just kind of shoved it back up in there. And he's like, I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, um, so Lindley then started talking to Ben, and Michael just started walking around the um the facility just looking at the snakes. So um suddenly four shots rang out and Michael hauled ass and when once he when he got the hell out of there, Lynn Lee was already waiting there next to the car, so they hauled ass out of there. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if I believe all of that. No. no. But so she, Michael, and Ashley were arrested January 16th, um, 2020, and charged with first-degree murder. So Ashley lawyered up and agreed that she would turn state's witness and was granted immunity from prosecution. Um, she said that Lynn Lee had claimed that Ben had been sexually assaulting her because, you know, this is 2020, this is like 2020, 2017. Mm. So a husband these days, a husband can be charged with sexually assaulting his wife. Wasn't always like that. Yeah. 
How can yeah. somebody ra- how can somebody rape their own wife? Yeah, right. <laughs> Wonder what Dick Darwin would say about that. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> but but um she she wanted to divorce Ben but um she was afraid that Ben's lawyers would be able to help him get custody of their kids. You know, cuz keep in mind, I mean, he's he's doing very well for himself. Mm-hmm. So he would be and she's just running a a failing beauty spa that that he's paying for. <laughs> so it's like so it's just like okay, if it comes down to attorney versus attorney, I think Ben's gonna have the better attorneys here. Yeah. Yeah, we call it Johnny Cochran. <laughs> Johnny Cochring. Johnny Cochring. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Where's go? there, oh. <laughs> but so her only option was to kill him. Of yeah. course. Yeah, that's yeah, your only that, option. That but um, Ashley believed Lindley's story and agreed to help her. I'm sorry. You know, you know, bro, I love you to death. But if you came to me and asked me for help killing somebody, I'd be like, I, I did not hear that. You need to just get the fuck away from me and... See you on the other side. <laughs> right. I won't kill anybody, but I'll help you hide the body. <laughs> so, <laughs> text messages between Ben and Lou, Lin, Lou, Lin, Lin, yeah. Lynn Lee showed that they were having problems in their sex life, but she never reported any sexual assault to the police, and she never brought it up in any, any interviews either. So it's just like this. It, it's not um it, it's not specified in the um documentary that I watched but why it's just like why even bring that up did right. did Ashley did Ashley make that up or did Lynn Lee just tell her that and then just not bring it up I think it was the latter because if you you know it's just when you start lying you have to remember every lie that you told yeah. So I I I think that's what it was, but but I don't know. It's not there. The documentary didn't say and that was on the documentary is on American Monsters on uh Discovery Plus, I believe. Ah. It was called A Building Full of Snakes. A Building Full of Snakes. Yeah. Which I honestly thought that this was gonna be something where a snake handler you know, was basically murdered by somebody who let all of his, like, venomous snakes loose or whatever, (laughs) you know? Yeah. That's a very James Bond villain thing to do. Yeah, and but I'm sure that there's cases out there like that, and if there are, I'm going to find one, because that's what I I was thinking this one was. Right. It it, it wasn't, but... But damn it, I want I want to tell that story. <laughs> right? Yeah, she she went in there, shot him, let the anaconda out, hoping the anaconda would eat him. <laughs> Give her the evidence. But anacondas aren't going to eat dead food. Oh, I know, but you know what I mean. Well, actually, I guess yeah. she would have known that if she was in the snakes, or did she just lie about that? Who knows? I don't know. Well, the, there was there was no anaconda. But um. Oh, so the anaconda was just a a, a red herring, as it were. Yeah, they. I mean, they had anacondas there, but there wasn't one loose. Oh, okay. Um, but well, damn, that's re- my theory all the hell. <laughs> it just reminded me of a uh, well, but still, an anaconda can't shoot shoot a gun. No, it can't. But you know, you get it in this, get it in this mouth or whatever. But nah. they don't even have the type of tongue that would be able to pull the trigger. I mean, hell, <laughs> you know, I have a really good tongue game, but I doubt I could pull the trigger on a gun with my tongue. <laughs> But um, did I just? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> but that just that reminded me of a meme that I saw. It said, "Um, so there's a there's a killer in my house, and I'm hiding in the um in the closet, and the kill I hear the killer yell, um, when I find you, I'm gonna throw you in." 
into a pit with a bunch of poisonous snakes. And me from inside the closet, venomous snakes. (laughs) (laughs) I could totally see myself doing you mean venomous snakes? You mean Get it. Venomous snakes, yeah. <laughs> because snakes aren't poisonous. They're venomous. Oh, they're venomous. <laughs> Poison's a completely different thing. Yeah. <laughs> Although I ain't gonna lie to you, we all grew up hearing poisonous snakes and we poisonous did. this we, and poisonous that. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's yeah. Not, that's I not mean, how it I, works. When I when I was a kid I would refer to them as poisonous snakes and everything. It wasn't until you know the the her her pe- Herpetologist came out and said it's actually venomous because they do not secrete venom; they inject venom. Yes, they are not poison. Poisonous would be like something that is poisonous to the touch. And I'm doing my herpetologist voice, I guess. <laughs> but, All right. So stop saying poisonous snakes; it's venomous. Yes, please. The grammar Nazis have spoken. Right. <laughs> Ouch. Just hit the microphone with my chin. All right. Anyway, so, so okay, in October, in October of 2021, Humphrey is found guilty of first degree murder and armed criminal action. Michael's attorney said that, like, hey, if if you change it to second degree murder, then we'll tell you where the gun is. <laughs> Dude, I, I just like how can that even be allowed? Like that that I know. That, that to that's me, tampering that's, that's with what, that's, that's tampering. Withhold, yeah, like withholding yeah, evidence. Withholding evidence, yeah. You know where the gun is, you're supposed to you know what I mean? I mean I know they're they're the defense team or whatever, but I just don't know. Like how do you how do you make uh, I don't know, I don't get it. It's probably why yeah. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> So Michael had kept the gun and they, they did produce it and they matched, and they matched the casings that were found to it. And, but no DNA was found on the gun. Hmm. It had been cleaned. So the, the judge then changed his sentence from life in prison to life with the possibility of parole. Hey, take what you can get, chucklehead. We don't yeah. know if you did it or not. Right. He still got charged for it. And honestly, because of their, their stories, there's like inconsistencies in both their stories. We're going to get to, um, Lynn Lee's version of the story here in just a minute. So. <laughs> you can only imagine what that's going to be like. She was probably a graduate of the William Reese, um, school for lying. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> that's essentially it. But um, in December of 2021, Lynn Lee went on trial, and she she had never been religious before, but there she was on the stand with a big cross necklace. Yeah. <laughs> um, she blamed Michael for the shooting, and of course she did. Of course. And she was found sec- uh, guilty of second-degree murder and got 13 years for it, and also guilty of armed criminal action, which she got three years for and that seems a little light compared to what um michael had gotten yeah no yeah definitely but yeah she's know. yeah she's she's decent looking woman but she's not like drop dead gorgeous or anything <laughs> i mean if i had to choose between her and jody arias i'm taking jody arias every damn time <laughs> <laughs> not that that matters <laughs> But, dude, sometimes you just got to do your marketing with who's willing to marketing with you. Yeah, true. Uh, but if you're into that kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> so Sam was pissed off about the about the sentence, and um, and he and his wife had a, another baby boy, and they they named him Ben. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think I missed something. That's I because thought. we've been digressing all over the place. <laughs> Surprisingly, we haven't gone off the rails yet, but. No, we're almost done too. Um, but. Okay, it's just not there. I didn't type out her. 
Wow. Oh, I'll, I'll do my best to remember it. Um, her side of the story, it was that, um, is that she brought, um, Michael to there as, as somebody that was going to buy snakes and everything. Mm-hmm. And that, um, and that, you know, he was around talking to Ben and everything and looking at snakes while she was just fucking off and doing whatever. And then all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, she heard four gunshots ring out and she came back and she was like, and she saw Ben dead on the floor. What have you done? Ribbit. <laughs> <laughs> but. So, oh, Jesus. And, all right. And then the two of them hauled ass out of there. So, so it's like hers. It's basically the same story. Just the, the shooter is different. Yeah. And. <laughs> so, um, in April, of, yeah, in April of 2022, Michael Humphrey filed an appeal. In November of 2022, Lynn Lee filed one, and in January of 2023, Lynn Lee dropped her appeal request. Michael did not drop his, and as of now, nothing has come of it. But, and that's that's it. That's that's the story. But. I honestly, I, I'm more inclined to believe Michael. You know? Yeah. I don't think that, yeah, I, I definitely don't agree with, um, the sentence that she got versus the sentence that Michael got. Because she was the ringleader of putting the the whole thing together and all that stuff. So I don't, you know, whether, Regardless of who actually pulled the trigger, she was the ringleader behind it and everything. And I honestly, I don't, although Michael was, you know, like a, you know, he had drug issues and stuff like that, but that doesn't make him a murderer. No, you know? no. Regardless of a popular opinion. Right. I, I, but I, I, I believe, but I, I don't believe all of Michael's story either. But I yeah, think, it's, I, you know, it's he said, she said, three sides to yeah. every story. One thing that they were sure of is that one of these people pulled the trigger. Yeah, but they, and they and they were both involved. So, you know, if all you do is drive the car away, you're you're still you're still an you know, accessory to murder. Still, yeah, well, you're you're still guilty. You you might get charged with second or third degree murder, but you're still guilty. No, if you drive the car, you get accessory to murder, which, I mean, is still not, you know. I mean, you're still going to do probably the rest of your life in jail, but. Right. But this this is in Missouri, and I think Missouri still has the death penalty, but, I mean, the death penalty was never on the table, was never on the table in this case. Yeah, but. But yeah, I, I mean, it just, you know, what a, what a bitch. I mean, you know, it's, it's just, to, to me, this, it seems like, um, this is just strictly something to where she, she wants it all. Yeah. You know, she's not, you know, it, it's, oh yeah. No, that's, that's when, when, when you first started this and we were getting into it, I mean, that's immediately where my head jumped. It was like, you know, I mean, he was bankrolling her fucking failing salon or whatever and all that, and she just wanted more, and that was the quickest, easiest way to do it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I would hope that I would hope that um, somehow Sam wound up with the the snake business and he was able to sell it. Yeah, you because know, he he don't know anything about snakes, but he's got right. this luc- lucrative business right here. To where, um, you know, to where you'd be able to sell it to somebody that knew, you know, knew what the fuck to do with it, and he, he, you know, from that business, he'd be able to make a pretty penny, and mm-hmm. save the and save the house, save the, you know, save the, the the property and whatnot. So that that's kind of what I would hope there, but it it didn't. Me- meanwhile, much. meanwhile, there's 72 acres somewhere that is covered with freaking snakes. <laughs> It's just just pythons and the anacondas. Yeah, designer but, snakes on top of it. Yeah, 
That's uh, another. Anyway. That's another thing. You don't you don't find any designer snakes in the Everglades. It's all just the basic, yeah. original appearance of the Burmese pythons that are down there. Well, you don't because you, know, you know what though, dude. If I spent that kind of money on a designer snake and I just didn't want it anymore, I'd sell it to somebody. Sell it. Just piss the fucking dude. Dude, I spent a thousand dollars on this snake. There's no way I'm letting it go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody's You're buying just, this thing from me. Right. And that just leads more cred- credence to the Hurricane Andrew thing. We already agreed on that. We we didn't. I know, right. You know, you were right. I looked it up. You were right. But I was right as well. <laughs> I was right too because some of it is from people letting them go. Yeah. <clears throat> but, but then again, I mean, dude, if you got a snake that's like whatever, 15 feet long or something, there's not a lot of people that are going to want to buy that, you know? So I mean, uh, I mean, no, no, no snake dealer, you know, no snake collector or whatever like that is going to pay like thousands of dollars for a regular pattern you know you know like an original pattern burmese python oh i know i mean you, know you can I mean. you can probably get a you could probably get a full grown one for less than five hundred dollars yeah um but when it comes to these morphs and all that stuff and he, the albino ones are pretty common now i mean they're they're not as expensive as they were back in the 90s because it's like they're they're almost as com as common. Just the, the straight albino ones. Yeah. They're they're almost as common as the um as the regular morph ones. It's, 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 yeah. it's the more exotic pat you know, color patterns and stuff like that that are generating the money. And you know, you probably a full grown albino Burmese python probably gonna be just you know, less than five hundred dollars just like a, a regular one because they're so common, but you're but they're not even finding albino berms in the Everglades. It's just the original ones, which was all they had in that hatchery yeah. when Hurricane Andrew hit. Anyway, but, anyway, thanks for listening. We appreciate the hell out of it. Um, yo, yep. yo, know, I mean, if you have any requests, you know, contact us on any of our socials: Facebook, Twitter. Or our website, um, CK, ckcbpodcast.com. We also have a Discord and a Patreon page. And yes. our first Patreon subscriber will get a free T-shirt. And if we cover a suggestion of yours to cover on these, you know, half pint episodes or whatever, we've already done it. Our first one was a a, a request. Yeah. Yeah. Your name goes on a list, and when we get T-shirts, you're gonna you're gonna get a free one. Yes, so, we will send you a free one. Yep. So um, once we get that ironed out, then we'll let everybody know and we'll, you know, go from there. Yes. So, um, yeah, do us a favor, rate and review us and all that good shit. And until next week, later. Cheers, everybody. Cheers.